The arts and humanities across time, across culture, across the globe, have been the way that human beings have let each other know that we are human beings. It's the way that we have communicated to each other. It's the way that the whole point of being human has been expressed. Since its founding in 1969, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation has invested in higher education, the humanities, the arts, and America's cultural heritage. Today, Mellon is one of the nation's largest funders in these fields. The foundation sees the arts and humanities as essential to the well-being of diverse, fair, and just democratic societies. It's like the whole city was in that bar and got turned upside down in the same way I did. Got a call, you were fighting at the shelter, that's true? The arts and the humanities are, are essential for all of us because they give us in a story form, an allegorical form, the story of who we are. They teach us who we are, where we are, and uh, give us a, a sense of our reason for being. They carry our meaning and that meaning across time and culture. Believing that the United States should have an art museum that would benefit the public, Andrew W. Mellon donated his extensive art collection to the nation, and in 1937, the National Gallery of Art was established. To the youth and enjoyment of the people of the United States. The spirit of that gift has become a central theme for the Mellon Foundation. The foundation believes that the arts should be accessible to everyone, whether they're living in urban New York or in rural America. I remember as a little boy, it was the arts and the humanities that gave me the ability to see a world far beyond um, that little dirt road in rural East Texas. So I'm a believer in the arts and humanities and the work of the Mellon Foundation. In 1983, the foundation gave its first grant to Apple Shop, an organization in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Apple Shop has served and supported rural Americans for decades, giving this community access to creative resources and artistic opportunity. Through the years, we've tried to explore Appalachian identity and culture through different forms of media. It started in 69 with film. And so it was young people with cameras trying to tell the story of their place, their future. And since that time, we added a radio station, a theater company, a youth media training education program. We've made over 100 documentary films. I grew up in the area in Jackson County, Kentucky, on a tobacco farm. And I was the only person of color in the school. And so I had a natural sort of antagonism or animosity for the region really until I went to college. And then at college, I was introduced to some Apple Shop films. And those Apple Shop films were my first chance to really see the nuance of the area explored. Sweet Jesus, one more time, bless these candidates. Lord, bless my brethren, and bless me, Lord. And it was the time when I was able to understand Appalachia less as a specific place and more as a condition brought about by economies around the world. And this would be the strip of where the businesses were, including his studio. And that's the road, you know, as you leave Jenkins. The ability for the Mellon Foundation to recognize the importance of rural community-based arts juxtaposed against urban large institutions has been critical. And they're really forward-looking in the field. The big black bug bit the big black bear, and the big black bear bled blood. Through the work of our grantees, the arts and humanities advance and enhance our understanding of our human conditions and allow us to imagine new possibilities. All I can read is Olsteds. The rest is gibberish. No, it's Spanish. Here at the public, at our theater, we put a lot of energy and heart and resource into trying to reach the people in our city who don't normally get the performing arts, to go to prisons, to go to halfway houses, to go to where the people are and say, this is for you too. 
The arts for me are the great equalizer. The, the idea of the arts, when they do their job, is they bring a community together and they allow a community to meditate on shared stories, shared values, shared myths, and by doing it together, they actually strengthen their ties as a community. They may walk into a theater as an individual person, but they walk out feeling part of an audience, part of a community. We are committed to the transformative power of the humanities and the arts and of higher education. And we have evolved to widen the field of vision to include more voices in histories and a wider range of talent. I think the Mellon Foundation has been important in part, of course, because there are very few, if any, foundations that give that central attention to the humanities and to the arts, to preservation, to libraries, museums, and so on, and has also been important in opening up new access to higher education for underrepresented groups. When you think about the things that Mellon has done for its entire history, we have acted on the belief that higher education is transformational. We've acted on the belief that knowledge is to be protected and shared. Mellon's early support for higher education focused on leading private colleges and universities. Grant making soon broadened to include public institutions. Even as Mellon has evolved, it continues to make intellectual attainment and impact the determining factors of its support. From its earliest days, the foundation supported historically black colleges and universities. And in 1988, under the leadership of then President William G. Bowen, it launched what is now known as the Mellon Mays Undergraduate Fellowship Program to address the problem of underrepresentation on faculties in the broader academy. My uh, sophomore year, one of my English professors approached me and said there was a new program that was starting up at Swarthmore and it was in conjunction with the Mellon Foundation to support uh, and encourage underrepresented students for going on to careers in academia. I had no idea what it meant to be a professor. I was intrigued and I thought I would apply for what became the Mellon Mays Undergraduate Fellowship Program. I actually feel still part of the Mellon program as a college president now, you know, 30, nearly 30 years, 30 plus years later. The MMUF fellowship program introduced me to the opportunities that were available for students like myself who wanted to learn about how to become professors. There's 50 million steps that you have to take and the MMUF program helped to get me started on that path and helped to provide financial support and mentoring support to see me through each of those steps. I wouldn't be a professor without the MMUF program. My work now focuses on the history of racial violence on the U.S.-Mexico border, primarily histories that have been disavowed by historians for generations, but also forgotten in public memory. I recognize that as an injustice, and I recognize the importance of being able to recover more of these histories and to find ways to make them public so that students don't have to travel 2,000 miles to get access to that history. So picking which cases or which events are the most interesting to be used as kind of a test case for these types of digital stories. As the internet emerged, new technologies enabled additional ways to access and share information. And so, reflecting its commitment to preserve all forms of knowledge, the Mellon Foundation launched the Journal Storage Initiative, or JSTOR, in 1995, making thousands of pages of scholarly journals available to researchers all over the world. The Mellon Foundation has identified that um, bringing knowledge and making knowledge available to many communities that have not had access to materials is extremely important. JSTOR started with the idea that it was going to save shelf space for institutions that have resources by converting their print volumes into digital volumes, where its huge impact has really been felt, in addition to helping people use things in new ways, has been people getting access to something they never would have had before. In addition to making deep knowledge available to the public, 
Mellon is working to expand space for, and access to, a wider range of complex storytelling. If we ask ourselves, who haven't we heard from? What hasn't been protected? What hasn't been venerated? What does it mean if we look at that through a lens of access and social justice? How we tell our stories in monuments and in places where you go to learn that aren't necessarily art museums or higher educational institutions. It matters that we understand ourselves at a particular moment in history, able to imagine forward and look back with understanding. In a recent grant to the National Historic Trust, funds are being used to preserve important sites of African American history. Uh, one example is the National Historic Trust will be uh, conserving the home of the legendary John Coltrane out on Long Island, which was destined to be destroyed. Now it will be renovated and made available for the public to see and experience. The purpose of the African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund is to uncover and uplift stories of black struggle and achievement. It is to celebrate sites of activism and community and to reconstruct our national identity to honor the full contributions of African Americans to our nation. The Andrew W. Mellon Foundation is a signature and key partner. They have invested in our national grant program, where just in the last two years, we have supported 38 preservation projects across the United States. We are telling stories that span not only geography, but also time. Today, the Foundation is working to ensure that our nation's museums and cultural institutions can tell a fuller American story in all its richness. That includes attention to the preservation of historic sites and to the diverse works of art on our walls and stages. In 2015, the Mellon Foundation commissioned the first comprehensive look at ethnic and gender diversity among art museum staff that survey has become a key tool in efforts to make museums more representative of the country's many different communities and histories. As a museum director, I believe deeply in the arts and arts institutions as important institutions in our communities, institutions that provide our audiences with the opportunity to encounter the arts, but also each other. Art allows us also to understand the past, to look at history, and to be able to confront history in ways that are powerful and profound. The Mellon Museum survey was transformative. What it did was it put actual numbers and actual information against what was something that had always been known, and that is the lack of diversity, particularly at the leadership level in the curatorial ranks in museums across this country. For 50 years, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation has supported the work of deepening our understanding of our shared humanity. Its grantee partners have illuminated the power and meaning of our human condition, allowing us to grapple with our histories consider who we are as a nation, and explore our human potential. Now more than ever, the work of the foundation and of the arts and humanities and higher education is critical. It is how we can create, expand, understand, and inspire a vision of our collective future. The Mellon Foundation is important if your soul is important. If the meaning of things human, if they mean something and they're important to you, Mellon is important. Arts and humanities are important because they give us a symbolic representation of us at our best. People need to communicate with one another. People need to tell stories. It's part of how you know what you belong to. It's part of how you know who you are inside. And that is how we fundamentally understand what it is to be human.